Yeah, so I saw this, and like, I I I had like like a fanboy nerd rage reaction, which I've never had before. I'm like, this man's career needs to end, right? Too hard for journalists. I think so, right? So he gives it a a one overall. Uh, the good it doesn't crash the bad incomprehensible design spanning from the controls to all audio and visible visual feedback unmemorable aesthetics horrifically inaccessible like what is he talking about like like <sighs> dreading he's been he says he's been dreading this review for a while and then he mentions that they're a family indie team because game works with his wife on stuff but he says he can't find anything good about this game. Many times, more and more frustrated, less able to see what the game's vision was or how the team planned to accomplish it. Mess a game, I'm gonna do my best to explain why. There's no sound when you die. A bit of a visual effect. No meaningful audio feedback to tell you you messed up in the most lethal way possible, now you're dead. A book suddenly flies off a shelf and hits you, killing you instantly without giving you any indication as to why. If you went through levels 1 through 5 picking up cool items to make the game more fun, the slightest touch from anything hostile could be about anything that moves, given that just everything visually blends with everything else will rob you of all that progress. Got an upgrade that turns your bland horizontal attack into a three-way spread, sometimes hit opponents? Gone. This, like, this sounds like he didn't play old games. Hey Jay, what's up buddy? Man, never played games with even a bit of a challenge. <laughs> Even the original Mario gives you a one-hit margin of error, which isn't the luxury afforded you to Bard's Gold. I honestly can't see why. Picked up a barrier bubble, but still died instantly. Oh, if something's moving towards you, you still die instantly. I might also keep coming back if the game is compelling, and there's no real compulsion to speak of. I don't unlock much by dying re repeatedly. No discernible story. Find a key and opening a door where I find a key and open the door. Endless hell of scrolling Twitter. None of the cute animal videos or posts from people who care about care about it. Accessibility is something I think about often. Bard's Gold has none of it. No colorblind options, no button remapping, no difficulty accessibility options, nothing. This also sounds like he doesn't interview, or doesn't review indie games. Because they tend to not have that. I mean, Cherry has a lot of stuff like that, and a lot of consideration for that, but like, that's hard. That was like a lot of work for a single person to put in. It was exhausting. Leave it. Don't play this game. Responsive, minimalist platformer like Love. So he likes Dead Cells, Binding in Isaac, Mega Man X. It makes a brand out of wasting your time. No tutorials or explanations on how things should be done. In the store description, like it's a North Northworthy feature, not intentionally adversarial gatekeeping. Getting off on keeping interested parties out. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just... It's just... I mean, I, I just, I don't understand what this guy's talking about. I, I guess he just does not like it. He just doesn't like it. And that's it. Like, and there's just no way about it. And as a result, it's a 1 out of 10. Like, I mean, that hurts Game of Terry's, like, Metacritic store, score and stuff. Like, what else has he written about? Assault Android Cactus. That game was pretty cool. Love, less is some more. Love is for everyone who's ever played a platformer. Tangled Deep. Uh, my friend was involved with that game. I've been curious about that. I don't know. It looks like he plays those K stuff and he's alright with it. How old is he? He looks young. 13. Uh, Divine Deception, Road to Ruin, and more. My next game looks like he makes game or he makes like card games. I don't know. There's not a lot about age. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't look that young. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. That sucks though. Yeah, I can understand like not liking it. Like it, it sounds like he said at worst it's just kind of like I understand thinking something's average, but. 1 out of 10 is just like, that's like, I'm trying to destroy you. I mean, isn't like, if you if you find nothing noteworthy about the game, doesn't that mean 
it's a 5 out of 10. Let's dox and harass him. <laughs> well, I mean, it was a... Uh, it was a knee jerk. It was a, it was a knee jerk reaction, right? Because I was uh, upset, and I, I guess maybe that's how like raging Zelda fans feel when like a Zelda game gets a seven out of ten, which uh, I mean it's a fine score. But like I mean, what he describes sounds like he felt the game was a five out of ten, in my, to my understanding. But he just gave it a one out of ten instead. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. That just seems an irresponsibly low score. Like, that's like abysmal failure. Explain his metric better. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Like, it, all, all it is is just like, I got hit by some books. Um, it's not clear when you die. One out of ten. Hate metric scores. Uh, I think this game sucks. Seven out of ten. <laughs> show a rubric what he typically considers to be to be like a worthy score or something yeah I mean that would be kind of good I mean that's like the plus of um I mean well let's see what he gave some of these other ones that's the plus of like YouTube reviewers or twitch streamers right like you know how they feel about different games so they don't even need to give a number a lot of times like you understand their metric like let me pick something I played a little bit of or let's see what scores he gives other stuff Right, like, Salt Android Cactus, a 10? <sighs> oh, okay. So this guy's like either or. Amazingly balanced cast, create memorable characters, follow response to action, craft a detail from dynamic environment, power ups, their own personalities, mind boggling extra modes. One critical game mechanic isn't tutorialized. It's arbitrary, feel like how he writes his review. Yeah. Yeah. Spectrum. <laughs> ten, ten, <laughs> I just saw your message now, Rim. Like, this game is cool, but... Like, what I played of it, I really liked, but... Uh, dang, 10. <laughs> Greatest piece of interactive media I've ever come across. Yeah. Okay. Oh, man. 10. Nine. That's funny. Like uh, another indie dev, um, whose YouTube I watch. I think he streams on Twitch now too. Is making made, just put out a game about uh, love, based on his mood that day. Nintendo Switch reference controls available on Windows PC as well. Painstakingly minimalist. You can move left, right, jump, checkpoints, jump height depends on how long you press the jump button. Force spawn button. Place checkpoint. Excellent thumpy electronic soundtrack. That's it. That's the game. Every level's monocolored, static geometry, one color moving, interactive parts in white. Everything else kills you instantly. The finding features love when you die, respawn at the checkpoint, you last place, which can be anywhere on solid ground. Obsessively play check, check you can obsessively place checkpoints after every successful jump you make. You can rarely place them wherever you, whenever you think you're up against something particularly difficult. One simple mechanic, however, that love shows its brilliance. Uh, can't blame my gear or the fact that any counter requires reading and guide videos to understand lengthy endurance trial leading up to conflict or incompetent team members or my bad luck when I die I can blame myself I don't die in the game I die in my hubris and I think that's beautiful well yeah so by this logic, love is a great game, but it isn't absolutely perfect. A few strange choices. Level platforms that move when you move, but you can place checkpoints when standing on them. Then you die, the platforms are set to their initial position. You respawn where you can die, or you can only die repeatedly with no ability whatsoever to recover. Your only option is to restart, which restarts you at the beginning of the entire game, not the beginning of the level. Alright, like... I think, I think we're done. <laughs> I think we're done. Uh, he needs a rubric for his own sake, right? He needs a slap. Well, uh, God. Wow.
Wow. I'd have to think a game is really malicious trash in order to give it a 1 to 10. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's all. <laughs> Man. Yeah, well, it looks like that's not going up on uh, Metacritic. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to make too intense judgment. It's like he sounds like he's he's new or something. That's 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 weird. Hey, but that's okay. Hey, games journalism. Right? Who cares? <laughs> Who cares, man? Who cares? Like, it doesn't seem like he's a journalist. I guess he makes card games. It wasn't really clear, but but uh, that's just I'm just confused now, legitimately. Like. And that's another thing too, right? Why there's so much validity in, uh, like, like learning about learning whether a game is good or not from your favorite streamer, um, because if that streamer's on like almost every day, playing games, and you you you, you understand like where they're coming from, right? Like what what their taste is, right? Like if I say a game is if I like a game or I dislike a game, right? I mean you guys know my taste in games well enough to like say you're probably gonna like this game and so like if I played something that you haven't played like based on my reaction to it like you guys could tell whether you'd like it or not too that guy we don't really know anything about him except he gave Assault Android Cactus a 10 and Game of Terry's game a 1 90s platformer yeah so many option diversity Enjoy a game or not, someone else might view the game for myself and my player's place. Well, that's the thing. I don't think he's reviewed to, like, I mean, I think some of these other games don't have access accessibility options either. Like, not in the same, no, I, I swear, I didn't spend that long with Assault Android Cactus, but it didn't have that many. But that just didn't come up. Yes. I don't know. Like, like having a number system can be good. I feel like I feel like it's not wrong to have a, a numbered rubric. Uh, that's good for some discussion, but it, or like you know, I gave it a seven. Why did you give it a seven? Here's why I give this a seven, as opposed to this that I would give an eight, and that that I would give a six. Um, but I don't know. Like if, if you're just handing out tens and ones like that, then it, it kind of it's kind of no point. <laughs> Reminds you of a '90s platformer. Yeah, well, I mean that's like Game's thing is he's he he digs like Mega Drive and, and Genesis and like like that that kind of pocket like late '80s and whatnot, and uh, I mean that's kind of the inspiration and and it's just kind of like uh, like I get it I don't know if that guy got it or not I don't I don't really know what that guy is thinking. Hmm. Article: How if devs don't have accessibility options, the game is injustice. Rick's review is up for blood or something. I, I mean, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Inconsistent, inconsistent is the problem. That's definitely the problem. You gotta be. You always gotta be. Or it helps to be consistent. And if you're not consistent, you're changing. You. It's kind of good to know why. But he doesn't. He didn't have that much stuff up there. So, and it's not like we read everything. So. But yeah, that's just too big of a jump. <laughs> but it's not like it's some prolific review site anyway, I guess. I don't know. Alright, Cherry will be there. But, uh... Yeah, that's enough to work with. But yeah, I mean... Whatever. <laughs> like, like, does anybody here go to uh you know game sites look at the review number and say like i should get that game now i don't think anybody does that so if i what i need to do is i need to take this right here uh quick connect take the goddess section and then move the goddess to the goddess section easy to review and tear down rather than analyze and create yeah i feel like um so a lot of reviewers that i really that I really like kind of have you know I mean they might not always hit the mark but they kind of have this underlying philosophy to their reviews or like the reason why they review is that by critiquing video games and offering feedback and criticism and making aware people aware of stuff I'm advocating for the consumer and I'm raising the overall 
quality of video games as a whole, right? And I mean, you know, I, I guess he's not that serious of a reviewer, but, um, you know, like, like that I can get behind. Like, that's, that's a, and I, even when I don't always agree with, like, the critiques or whatnot, you know, like, that's, like, that's stuff Jim Sterling would say. Um, Adam Sessler, who doesn't review anymore, and who just didn't, like, straight up like JRPGs, but, like, 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 these kind of dudes would put, like, a lot of, um, thought into their criticism, and, like, I thought that was, like, healthy, healthy critics. Uh, it's definitely easier to tell down to. I mean, that's immature criticism, right? Like, accessibility options. What type of reviewer that guy is? I don't think he's an accessibility reviewer. <laughs> sure about buying game. Wait till it's sell. Watch a let's play at the start of it. Reviews don't tell me anything. <laughs> I don't trust myself. It's not me who is wrong, is the world. We exactly, we have a lot more access to to information now, right? To, to discern this decision. He should because he seems special. <laughs> I guess you're allowed to say that, Joro. <laughs> As somebody who uh, spent a lot of time taking care of special needs, well, I think you're allowed that. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, it's funny, I think, like, the kind of irrational upset I briefly felt there was kind of a response to, like, what appeared to be an irrational grading of game's game. <laughs> Just like, man. Disrespectful article. I guess so. I mean, it sounded like he tried to preface it, like... You know, fairly, uh... Fairly... Try, try, like he was trying to be mindful when prefacing it, I suppose? Right? Like, um... Like, it pains me to say this, but... Hmm... He failed! <laughs> yeah... Yeah, he totally did. <laughs> uh, he totally did. It's just kind of like, come on. As much as I bashed Final Fantasy VIII, like, I'm more respectful than that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we want the goddess position UI panels. But yeah, you were saying, uh, writer's responsibility, audience, make sure he knows what he's trying to get across. Yeah, I have no disagreement there. I, I can't call people stupid for, like, not understanding something I've written. And I was just confused. But, uh, yo, that probably just means not much of a future as a reviewer. Hey, Fovic, what's cracking, man? Let's see. Like, yeah, that dude. And I think most of the other reviews of Bard's Gold were like, you know, like, like, generally positive. And they were just like, yeah, you know, if you dig retro style platformers, if you dig retro style platformers and you're fond of this era and things being a little more unforgiving, uh, like this will this will work fine for you. 